One often hears the phrase, it's only a lottery. You hear coaches, you hear players saying, it's just a lottery. I actually don't accept that, and most psychologists wouldn't. The idea of how to practice penalties taking in competitive situations, how to simulate real match pressure, that's one that's occupied good coaches and psychologists for the last 30 years, that one can simulate competitive situations by telling the goalkeeper in advance which side one is going to place the ball to and if the goalkeeper saves it there's pressure so by knowing in advance which side the goalkeeper has an advantage and if you can score in that situation that's good training. The Mexican coach Javier Aguirre had his players practice penalties at the end of every friendly match they played in the run-up to the 2002 World Cup. That gave them the feeling of taking penalties in front of 40,000 plus crowds a third way was devised by the English management team, which had the players walk from the centre circle to the penalty spot and then shoot. Now, this is interesting because it's during that walk often that people experience the intense pressure that goes with taking a penalty. And now it's the golden goal hero, Anne, from the other night against Italy. 100% record so far. Anne against Casillas. They're getting ever closer. When Korea, South Korea played against Korea Spain and beat them in the penalty shootout, people were wondering why the South Koreans were so good. But in fact, it turns out that the way in which draws are handled in the South Korean league is through penalty shootouts. And that's a very powerful example of how practice makes people confident and makes their skill execution automatic. We have an Asian semi-finalist for the very first time. Pressure affects the way we think, the way we feel, the way we behave. And one example of that is it causes players to speed up their motion because that's what we do when we're nervous. We want to get out of the anxiety-provoking situation. It's very hard to visualise in, tra in a training situation what it's actually like to walk up with the world watching you on television or in the stadium and the, 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 the pressure that's on an individual to do that. You know, suddenly the goal is, is much so, smaller, the, goal, the goalkeeper's much bigger, the ball appears to be further out. Everything gets uh, magnified compared to what it's like on the training ground. Off Spain. This is your moment, Ian. He didn't make it. Look on if you dare. And this is some roller coaster ride now. Final whistle sounds. We're back in Genoa. Just need to ask the lads who wants to take a pen on. Obviously, the first five volunteers. Uh, they wanted it more than me. And fair play to them, they took it. So, uh, fair to use them. I've never took a pen in my life, so I wasn't thinking about it. Like, but uh, obviously, if it did go into sudden death, I would be brought into it. So, I was still part of it, but uh, it was nerve wracking. It is often the way that managers ask the players for volunteers because the people who feel confident at the time are generally the ones who are most likely to score for you. If a player is not confident about it, even if he had been selected in advance, he may just be having an off day or an off game or have a little hunch in his, in his mind at the time that he says, I don't feel right. And if, if he's forced into going to take a penalty, that's not the right decision either. I think the very act of coming to a lot of players at the end of the match and saying we need to volunteer builds it up as a, you know, something that's dangerous and likely to end in tears. Whereas if everybody knew before the game, you know, I'm taking a penalty and you know, it's my responsibility to practice it. I can't, I can't see how it would be any worse anyway than looking for volunteers. If they were the volunteers, maybe there wasn't too many other volunteers, you would wonder why some of the experienced players didn't go. They would obviously felt that they had 
physically they weren't able for it or, or again mentally they, they, they had doubts about themselves. I think one of the problems was Ian was off the pitch who would have been automatic. I think Stan probably would have been an automatic penalty taker and so it was a little bit uh, different from what we had sort of envisaged, you know. So we, we'd practised them the day before and we'd uh, kind of got ourselves geared up. Uh, in the practice I missed mine so that, that was... Uh, that kind of threw me a little bit and um, and I said to Mick, well Mick, I'm no penalty taker and uh, he said, I've got five, you're fine. So then it was between me and Mark Kinsley if it had gone a step a step further and me and Mark were looking at each other going, <laughs> what do you think? And we're trying to be right, right, hoping to God that it wouldn't happen. The first to take will be Robbie Keane. It's five aside, you'll know that of course. Robbie Keane, I think, took the first one and yeah, he's he's so confident you, you would have preferred if he took the whole lot. After that, I think most people were just looking through the cracks in their fingers and you know, listening to whether the crowd went, you know, went berserk or remained silent, as was the case on the night. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't one of those things you looked at with much confidence. and hoping that many was going to miss, I then started to feel, look, I'll score, this is okay. Then I was getting the confidence that perhaps I should have got two minutes earlier, uh, but it was too late. Mendieta has to take this penalty kick that can decide it all for Spain. Quite simple. If he scores, they win. If he misses, there are two more kicks. At least. Oh, this is almost unwatchable. People watching the Mendieta penalty kick were surprised when he seemed to replace the ball. It's very hard to know whether he did that because of being anxious or whether he did it because he was trying to psych out Shea Given. It's really impossible to say. All we do know is that it was a pretty poorly struck penalty. And again, it shows the anxiety that affected even the top Spanish players. Well, it's funny, the Spanish journalists afterwards, um, when a few of us met with them after the South Korea game, they're saying that's how Mendieta always takes his penalties. He, he runs up slowly until the goalie commits himself and basically just dribbles at home and apparently he's never missed one. So, you know, what looked like a scuff to us was art. All in all, the penalty taking from a professional level was very poor. These are top class professional players and two of them missed the target completely and others hit very weak kicks. And saying that penalty taking is a lottery allows players and management off the hook because it gives everyone the opt-out clause we had no control it was just a game of chance it isn't a lottery and one must have a system one needs to know who one's best penalty takers are and in what order they should take the penalties and if we take other aspects of football there's a plan for who takes corners there's a plan for who takes throw-ins it's not a question of who feels confident on the night to take a throw-in or who feels confident on the night to take a corner every major Sports person at all levels knows that sport, although it's played with the body, it's one in the mind. Ready, successful in the last minute of normal time of the game against Casillas. And Ireland lead one now. 